does not reappear for the rest of the day, and at the end of my shift, I retire to my room. When I go downstairs to the next morning, I am met with a familiar sight. Both Karma and Rumpel stand on opposite sides of a table, their voices rising in argument. They're fighting again? I happen to catch their words as I walk quietly downstairs. Who are you to criticize my work ethic when you're gone for several days leaving with your look workload? It wasn't like I wanted to. And you, who are you to criticize how I work? All of the, uh, all of the ladies I spoke to said that you would shower them with compliments. What kind of pro professional behavior is that? I'm having a hard time believing you're a professional with the way that you flaunt yourself. At least I don't flirt with people to attract their attention. And you flirt with them and don't realize the effect that it has on other people. That's true. Flattery is not a crime. Just yesterday, the princess came to see you in your room. All because you gave her the impression that you liked her. Oh, damn! Were you actually spying on her? And you called me uncouth. No, I overheard her say it. And you're wrong. I never say anything if it isn't truthful. Well, well, then the truth of the matter is that you must be in love with many women. Because they all seem to like... Uh, but they all seem to think that you'll get down on one knee and propose to them. You say some sly things, Miss Karma, and yet you're the biggest liar of us all. At least I don't lie to my partner. Oh. I don't know what to say. Because it can't be true. Because most flattery, like what he's doing is untrue and just baseless. Oh, man. At least in my opinion. There could be people like that, but that's way... I don't think I could be in the same room with them for more than 10 minutes. Um, Cause like... If you just keep complimenting a person, those compliments slowly lose value. Oh, watch from afar. This is their fight. I have no reason to jump in to defend anyone. I watched their fight from the middle of the staircase. The two of them never seemed to notice me standing there. I have never lied to the princess. Sometimes people might assume a different intentions on my flattery, but I never lie. That is exactly what a liar would say to the. Oh, that is why. Ex oh, that exact. That's exactly what a liar would say to defend himself when he knows that he's been caught. Liar. The only liar here is you. Excuse me. I love you know that I never lie. Then what's this about Miss Karma, hmm? One moment you say it's a disguise, the next moment you say... Rumpel flinches back as Karma stands taller and clenches his hands into fists. I begin to make my way down to the suitcase. I come to stop in between the two men who seem surprised to see me. I am about to speak but the sound of footsteps distracts me. You two are at it again. Yurian stops at the table and frowns at them. Both men glance away from a cold gaze. Uh, Karma murmurs something before excusing himself. Rumpel looks down at the table, his eyebrows knit together with frustration. What is wrong with you two? Why can't you just be civil with each other? Yurian, you're never here to see how these fights start. Karma is every bit a beast. Damn! Pun intended? No, baby. Maybe? Pun? Beast? I'm gonna stop now. <laughs> Karma is every bit a beast and attacking me for no good reason at all. But with your keen eye, you should be able to discern that. You should be able to discern that, right? Flattery won't work on me, Rumpel. And second, I doubt these fights start with any bit of pr prompting from you. I swear I don't do anything to start it. Karma is just always irritable he's like a woman during that one time of the month why would you say that in front of a woman <laughs> oh fuck oh that was so cringeworthy but <laughs> 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 
Yearn walks away stiffly, leaving me with Rumpel. I look at him, a little irritated by his earlier comment. He gives me a sheepish, sheepish smile. That was uncalled for. Princess, can you give me some help with inventory? I'm coming! As I turn away, Rumpel waves. What? I'll see you later, princess! Who knows? You might get your second good deed. I resist the urge to roll my eyes. Why do you resist? Just roll your eyes. I'm, I'm doing that right now. Rolling. And turning my face toward the toward the screen so I can read. Okay, still rolling. It feels it feels like I'll be a while before yet before I can't read it like this, I'm sorry. It feels like it will be a while bef What? It feels like it will be a while yet before I can achieve my next good deed. That was tough. Uh, that's a shitty comp or not a comp that's not even a comp that's a that's a shitty comment he made. Uh what a brilliant day. The sun is shining, the town is full of laughter, and I have my sweet princess here to accompany me. Oh You took my lines! It sounds like I'm getting easier to read to. No, you said it enough times that I memorized it. That, mean, uh, that means you must uh, pay attention to my words. That in itself is a compliment, princess. It is not. We are on our way to the usual store to restock our medications when a small figure leaves out through the front door. What? Who is this? This is the first NPC with no, with a face. Oh my God. She must be a witch. She stares at us with a lost look on her face. Rumpel reacts immediately, making his way over to her with a broad smile. Madame, I can't help but notice the pained expression upon your beautiful face. Is there anything I can do to assuage your worries? For seeing your lovely face shadowed by such sadness stabs me right in the heart. Wait. She looks like Lucette. Sort of. The woman stares at Rampel dumbfounded. Her, his smile wavers and he steps a step back, suddenly look looking alarmed. Oh my god, it's his wife! Oh, I'm sorry. It's you! Huh? I'm sorry! I'm so sorry! I <coughs> um, this is awkward, madame, but I'm afraid I don't know you. What? Or do I? Do I know you? I take a step forward and look at the woman flatly. Wait a minute. She looks like someone. Maybe Lucette with short hair? I don't know. But she definitely looks like a similar design to another character. He's been cursed. He has amnesia. Amnesia? The woman stares at Rumpel, scrutinizing him. You do seem... different! Change from before in any case! So you knew me before! How terrible it is to me forget... How terrible it is of me to forget such a lovely face! But perhaps you could help me remember? The usual flirty suggestion is in his voice, but the woman seems unaffected. I can! I can help you remember! I too! Princess Peach! <coughs> you... you can? It's no wonder I can't remember your name! You have the fairy tale girls, don't you? Who is this Who is this woman? <laughs> you surely don't remember me! I... I'm sorry. The woman looks conflicted, but the expression is gone as fast as it appears. I'm Bria! Your fi- <coughs> Your fiance! Oh. So he wasn't married, but pretty close. What? The shock is apparent on my face, but nowhere near as impressive as the astonish astonishment on Rumpel's face. My fiance? She has to be lying. How can Rumpel possibly have a fiance with, 
with the way that he is. He's barely able to dedicate himself. To, he's barely able to dedicate himself to a single woman for an hour. Bria takes a step forward and takes Rumpel's hands in her own. You don't remember me holding my hands like this when you took me in the forest and proposed to me, Captain? Rumpel opens his mouth, but no words escape. He reminds me of a lost dog all of a sudden, with his eyes so wide. Bria, Bria runs her fingers through his hands. I loved you. You loved me. We're a happy family. I love you still very much. I... I don't remember this. How can I help you to remember? Rumpel's voice is faint, but he still tries to smile. Uh, under the circumstances of the curse, tell me that I need to remember through memories and, um, a journal somehow. A journal? I have your old journals! I can show you the very first love letter you've read to me! Bria starts walking, her hands still clasped in Rumpel's. I stare after them for a few moments, trying to piece together what is happening in my head. I chase after them. Bria enters a house, one that Rumpel stares in awe. When she comes out, she is holding a journal. She hands it to Rumpel, then opens it up to the first page. This is a little embarrassing, but there it is! You compelled your letters into a journal! Oh, that makes sense. Rumpel slowly reads over the words, and I notice the strange glazed look come back into his eyes as, ex as his expression grows more somber. This is, uh, this is like the last time, but he remembered that he was a doctor. Bria turns to me as Rumpel is reading, her eyebrows arched. And who are you? His partner. Partner? We're helping each other with our curses. Oh, you're cursed too. You poor thing. Why does she have that? Oh, Bria's voice is... Flat. She is glaring at me with beneath her smile. I have done nothing to merit this distrust from her, and I cannot bring myself to trust her either. Bria? Rumpel looks up from the journal and stares at her. Yes, sweet? Rumpel's melancholy expression throws me off. Last time he was so excited when he realized he was a doctor, but now his expression is heartbreaking. I remember. I did propose to you. In the forest, when it was dark, I... You, s you step out a little light around the clearing! What? We spoke for a while and then you got down that one knee! You dropped the ring! It had fallen in the roots of some tree. We you all noticed when a bird came down to pluck it out of the bramble! I had no idea what you were looking for, but still chased after the bird! And then you got the ring back. And you knew. Rio holds out her hand, and I notice a beautiful red-green gem ring on her ring finger. Oh. It was, it was still charming, though. I lived for so long because it felt so memorable. Plucking her invasion ring out of her bird beak. She caught the bird? It, you're right. Rumpel smiles a little uncertainly. In that moment, I feel him turn away from me. He does not realize I'm there staying with Biria. Biria? Bria. Bria! It's Bria! Why am I feeling so uncomfortable? You said you were helping her repel with this curse, yes? She turns to me. There is no worry. I can help them now. This is what couples do. I have to force the pity out of my heart. I have to force myself to think rationally. This seems off, but Rumpel remembers. Which means this is the truth, right? Aw, oh, hell no. I still feel like something's wrong. I don't trust this woman. Do you know anything about him, dear? Have you helped him regain any of his memories? She was with me when I regained my memories. Lucette is a very valuable good luck charm. That's all I am! That's all I have 
to you! Raphael flashes a small smile at me before turning to Bria. Her eyes seem a little colder now. Tell me! What do you call by now? I don't want to figure out your name, I need to... I need something to call you by! Rumple. Bria's cold gaze falls on me. I can sense something in them that surprises me. Jealousy? Why would she be jealous of me? Rumpel? Would you maybe want to come back home with me? What? I know you must be overwhelmed, but I might be able to help you remember some things. Uh, I'm... I'm sorry. I'm actually... I actually have a patient somewhere else that I need to tend to. Bria's eyes flash briefly. Her frown is there for a few seconds before she smiles again. You always work good with your patience! I'm sorry. It's okay! I understand you're overwhelmed! But remember that I'm here for you too! I want to mend things to make them go back to what they were! How about you look over that journal and then we meet again tomorrow? We go look! Like, hey, there's one step at a time! <laughs> I would like that. Get to know each other again! And in time, I'm sure you'll remember what you used to have! Oh my god, Bria, stop talking! I loved you. Loved? Past tense? And I did too! Past tense! And I still do! A slight shiver runs down my spine as I stare at the two of them. So Rumpel probably broke up with his fiance for some reason. And I think that's. Like, one of the main things that she's not telling us. I feel like she's a witch, though. There's an uncomfortable feeling once again. Bria and Rumpel agree on the spot to meet tomorrow, and then she leans up to kiss Rumpel on the cheek. He puts a hand on his cheek as she walks off with a gentle smile on her face. Are you okay? He looks at me, and for a few moments, I feel that gaze linger Longer than it normally does on my eyes. Then he smiles and laughs. Of course I am, princess. I just remembered something of my own past. I'm guessing that the second entry has appeared on my journal by now. I can't wait to, be to get back to the Martian and read it. Bria has the rest of my journal, so I might truly be able to remember everything if I talk to her. Including your love for her? That's true. It's like, uh, the Witcher. The Witcher. When Geralt loses all his memories about Yennefer. And then you get the choice between Yennefer or the other girl that I forgot to... What is the other girl's name? I forgot the other girl's name. Whatever. The redhead. Uh, he sighs out before he claims, proclaims that we should finish our errands. I follow him around the town, though the scenery lacks its usual vibrancy. Rumpel doesn't speak to anyone, not even the girls, while we walk. He keeps his eyes focused on the ground, and when he speaks to the shop owners, his cheer is lukewarm at best. I try to start a conversation with him many times, but he shies away from talking. I feel like there's something he's not telling me. No shit. Why else would he act like this? When we arrived at the margin, Rumpel quickly excuses himself, not even sharing his epiphany with his past with anyone. What has him so bent out of shape? He just regained another memory. I'm assuming he's going to read it just now. It's not like him to hide things. I hope Rumpel is okay. What's with the snarky attitude though? With the uh, loading screen. It has been about a week. Uh, you know what? I'm going to end it here. Because doing Bria's voice took it out of me entirely oh man I'm so tired by doing that voice I wonder who the voice actor for Toad is from Super Mario cause that shit is tiring unless that is his natural voice or her natural voice oh boy alright I'll see you guys later have a good one bye bye